short, he said it's going to be short. Little oration from Ronnie Plant, Ronnie, please. I don't know why I'm honoured thus, but whoever, uh, when Paddy said I was to make it short, before I start speaking, I just want to mention about at the uh, close of uh, uh, the mission in uh, on Edges Island some years ago, the bishop given the homily. When he stood up, he said, uh, the parish priest here has asked me to make it short, he said. I don't know why short, he said. Where can you go tonight now? He said, it's half past eight at night, but just the time of it. He said, where can you go to other than the pub? So I'm not going to be, I'll, my words will be short, sweet. As a matter of fact, I have to make a few notes, because when you get to my age, you forget. But probably, when I get going, then Paddy will probably have to stop me. But you all know why we're here. I want to relate Thomas Swain and all his comrades. And I mean all his comrades from way back to years, back in, down to, going from Rhineborough and right up to the present day. And that takes in everything, 1798, 18, the 1800s, uh, 1900s, and up to, as I said, up to the present day. But thank God, things are much quieter now and much better. But often the men who died in, uh, Northern Ireland in later years, people have some kind of a sense that they're not looked upon in the same light. But they asked this question, I've asked it before, and nobody has ever said no to me. If they hadn't gone down the road of the gun, we'd be as near peace as we are today. We listened to the glib, and I shouldn't, I'm not being derogatory when I said this, we listened to the glib Brits for hundreds of years, but where did it get us? People say today, we could have done a lot by talking around the table. We talked for long enough. But then, men like Thomas Trainer, men like Father Murphy, all those people had a sense of outrage. And we have lost that sense of outrage now. All you've got to do is go back and look at the old age pensioners who lost their sense of outrage and stood up for the medical car being taken from them. And you see what happened. Well, I think that in a lot of respects today, we should have renewed that sense of outrage and let our voices be heard. But nobody does anything. You hear people talk, and you hear people moan, and you see the letters in the papers and all this about the bad times. I don't think the times are bad at all. The times may be bad as far as it's concerned. What is it about it? It's handy in shops, that's about all. But uh, as Thomas Davis said, uh, or was it Michael Davitt said, Michael Davitt said, if you took politics and economics out of our country, wouldn't we have a wonderful country? And that's how it is now. We hear all this thing, you take up the paper and you're reading every day the doom and the gloom about the money. I have been through probably about eight recessions over in England, working over there. I went in 56, Dev said we were traitors. But we were, he hadn't very much for us here. Ten shillings a week for the farm and keep yourself. That was the kind of thing then. But like I said, we should be more outraged at the things that are happening. And like Henry Ford said, don't find fault, find a remedy and do something about it. Instead of that, we just talk. All you've got to do, as I say, is look at the letters, pages of the papers, see the morning and growing, and who does anything? It's like everything within the health service or within all the uh, different bodies we have. Mr. Nobody, he's a great man here in Ireland. He passes the book and does nothing. As I say, lip service is passed, and that's it. I could go on and on and on. Uh, uh, just one thing, a, a note I made last night. Uh, 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 a clergyman writing an article, he said that the best words, uh, the best news the world ever heard came from a graveyard. And when you look back at that Easter time, is it very true? And that's how it was. But, uh, Thomas Turner was born in 1882, that's 122 years ago, uh, in Cannes Court. He was executed on the 14th of March 1921. Uh, Another thing too, just before I finish, we have lost, it seems to me, we've lost our sense of nationalism. All you've got to do is look around you here and you've got probably, if you have a dozen young people, older people, it's like a bit like going to Mass. You see all the older people there and the younger people don't go because they think it's the dumb thing. Peer pressure, I suppose. But when it comes to nationalism, it works the same. We have, we don't, I was in a house yesterday evening and I mentioned about coming here. And there were a family there between five or six, between the age of 10 and 20. I think they looked at me as if I was a bit of a pariah. 
because of, I was going to, to give it a talk here. And then last night I went to a family, entirely different. They wanted to know all about it, all about Thomas Trainer and everything else. I had to go out to the car and get my book, The Forgotten Ten. And by the way, there's a bag over there with 25 books in it. The Forgotten Ten, the sales from that go to the National Graves Association who are responsible for the upkeep of this and all the, well I won't say all, but many of the monuments throughout Ireland, they're responsible for them. And the books are there, and if somebody wants them, uh, see Betty Murphy, I gave her the bag and I told her to look after it, because I'm a very bad man to look after the money. Suffice to say that Thomas Trainer and all those men down the years will have an awful lot to be thankful. And when you look and see, you stop and think, and I've said this here before, I wonder what would they think if they came back to the history of the country of Irish today. They would say, has it all been in vain? I don't think so. It's up to ourselves to pick ourselves up off the ground, take one day at a time, and walk and talk with God, and you won't go wrong. God bless you. I say. Just before we have to, our, our honor being, just another Thank you very, very much and on behalf of the committee again. I know the reason we're here matters a lot, but it's five or five thousand. The reason that you thought fit to come here and honour Thomas Trainer and his comrades and the men and women of 1916 and 21. But for them, we wouldn't be where we are today. I know it's not the be all and end all, but it's the next best thing for the time being. These are the future will. So, so we'll, we'll have our honour being now, please. <coughs> In a field of stars, a tall Margaret.